In these really strange times of isolation, let's not forget where the things that lift us up come from. I've been falling back on all these old albums that I used to listen to during my teenage years, the nostalgia albums, just to keep my mood above board. In the same way that we often forget to check in on those mates who we lean on for support. Let's not forget to check in with the artists, the writers, the musicians, whose work is helping us through this trying time. And it is tough when our job is to try and find the the silver lining or the lighthearted side to the everything that's going on. But I was about two weeks into it, I reckon I came home and I was just in a real bad mood. And my girlfriend was like, what's the matter? And I was like, I didn't really know what the matter was. But then I realized, I was like, oh, it's kind of like when you're a parent and you're telling your kids everything's okay, but everything's not okay. And then eventually it wears on you as the parents. Or like when you shut the bedroom door and the parents are in bed, I'm sure they're actually talking about the real problems. I've been speaking to a couple of musicians. It's mm. extremely rough compared to, compared to plenty of other professions. Especially compared to radio even. Like normally those things work quite closely, but it's one of those rare times that you thought, hang on. Having a job in commercial breakfast radio is really safe at the moment. That was probably one of the, that was the first time for us when we really thought like, oh, hang on, is it, is it still okay to be laughing at this? Mm. And yeah, we agreed on in the right way. Um, but yeah, it was, it was hard to look at your feed and you just saw all your friends and all their stuff were getting cancelled. To have to put all of that on hold and really have, like there's no sort of creative outlet, there's mm. no, no nothing. And also your livelihood, if you're counting on that sort of cash, like, it's, I suppose it's hitting everyone, right? I work in the field of uh, digital. I make uh, apps for kids, apart from being in a rock and roll band, which we'll get to. We had a, a bunch of shows, festivals and things that we were playing, and then they all got cancelled, <laughs> which was unfortunate. Coming up, we were going to have the biggest tour that we have ever had. It is a massive detriment to us now, not being able to get out and play music, whether it be writing, whether it be recording. We are on, the, on this gigantic tour around Australia with my band, Hunters and Collectors playing, you know, seven to 12,000 people venues. And of course, those venues were the very news that very quickly started getting looked at. And that was a real shame. I guess we've gotten over the point of even speculating. You just can't keep on having this conversation saying it may or may not. And so, we, yeah, we're just, we're just going to wait. At the last festival we played, uh, Dan, our drummer, popped in an Uber and we found out later that he picked up Corona in that Uber. But before he heard anything about that, we had a recording session in the studio then I found out I had it. So that was me locked up for two weeks. So we were in the States when this was all um, popping off and like uh, we got back, I was like very much aware that like I just have to stay in my room. And I actually, I was like, it wasn't so bad. I had my drum kit that I could practice on. I had my studio. I was very well equipped for it. I was like, great, now I have an excuse to sit in here the whole time and record. Like, I don't have to be doing anything else. I can only be in these two rooms, so I'm staying in this one and I'm recording music. I can't speak for every artist out there, but a lot of what sustains us as a band, especially financially, is being able to sell out all our shows. So we're very lucky that we're basically in the complete opposite point of the cycle that would be so much more devastating if you had just finished music and, and you're like, sweet, we're geared up to tour the record and promote it. And then it's like, oh, you can't. Uh, it's suddenly just like roadblock, stop. No, you're not going and performing those songs live. It's like almost like a blessing for us as a band to not have to have any distractions to just have the time to write music. But it has stifled us so much. Me sitting at home with a guitar and trying to write a song by myself doesn't really bear any fruit in terms of Polish Club. It, it, it's a weird thing we've done where we figured out we have to be in the same room and have to just bash it out. Knowing that every time we leave the house, it's like a treat. It's not great for our creative flame to be like, okay, this is our one chance to do it. Uh, make sure it's good. Well, I think humans are really good at finding another insecurity when we get rid of the other one we've just conquered. We think when we finish a problem, then the path is clear. That's just not the way life is. And I'm sure that if I'd finished the tour and we'd done all the things we're supposed to have done, yeah, man, I'd find some other you know, itch to scratch. In many ways, sometimes having a very definite problem like unemployment, <laughs> um, despite all the hardships it can cause, you can go, okay, there is, I can focus on a solution here. 
I hear that when piracy and Napster and all of that shit hit the fan, things were a bit difficult for you. What was your first response? What happened during that period? Uh, yeah, that was a crazy time for me. I just started the label and we didn't have Spotify. We didn't have you know, Apple Music. So you where it was taken to was a place where you saw nothing. So essentially I started up my label at possibly the worst time because you'd record a record and it'd just be taken for free. The point was uh, I lost a shit ton of money. Like, you know, and it was my money. And then we lost our house. But ultimately we went to, back to zero. And this was at 50 years of age. So yeah, that was, that was tough times. If you can, try not to get caught up in the past. Learn from it, but then yeah, okay, great knowledge it and then Find something to engage the now. So we set about disrupting what it is to do a live broadcast. So we created the company called Sound Halo. We launched with a little unknown artist called Alt J. And it was an enormous success in many ways. And next thing you know, I was just a stupid tech head trying to find a place for the world of entertainment and technology to you know, come together. I always fall back into the sentiment that the music industry is broken and doesn't really work for the people who create. Having said that, we're all still in it. There's the other thing, you know, the crystal ball thing. Hopefully everybody can get their crystal ball, walk outside, drop them on some concrete and just shatter them for once and for all. Life does not go according to the plan. The crystal ball doesn't work. It'll adapt. The music industry will adapt. I have a specific set of skills and I know how to use them, but I don't know how to monetize them. Now the realization that it's, it's going to be longer. Let's be a bit more creative with the space that we've got. It's not like someone said you can't ever play live again. It'll come back. Music won't die. The bands, the bands aren't going to like end. We don't want people getting together. We've got to all work together for, for the greater good to stop this. And then once it's all over, put us on the bill for the celebration party. <laughs> It's so great to see that music is not going away. But just like everything else, it's adapting. All the guys I spoke to are at different points, from cancelled tours to recording new albums. But what was consistent across the board is their resilience, that drive to create, to entertain the masses and to just keep chugging along. Their very livelihoods are up in the air and they're still going. Maybe that's what makes their music so great. With not knowing where this was headed, um, I moved away from my wife and kids 